Hello, bonjour. Hi. Welcome back to No Shade with Odie and Div. When we bring the it back, here, we got the eye profession and we spill all the tea, honey. We are both queer people of color who are here to discuss some topics that may or may not offend you, but probably will. So check your privilege at the door, sis, and let's get into it. Yes. Hey, we're back with yes. episode 10. We made it to this milestone. Yes, honey. And like every ep- episode, it's a milestone for us. So before we actually dive into what we're going to talk about today... You know how we always do our little drinks. Today we added some snacks that Nick and I bought. We found this cute little shop that sells like locally made products. Mm -hmm. So And we'll definitely we'll put them in the description if we start posting and things like that, darling. So you'll know where to find them. But they're at Polo Park, so if you live in Winnipeg, you know what to do. So first up we have this really fancy um chocolate bar i think it's alicia's confections and it's cookies and cream it's super cute that's why i picked it up i love chocolate and then we got some what are these sweet bliss swedish candies from sugar joy and these look really bougie so i can't wait to eat them and they like feel really soft so i feel like they're gonna taste really good and then finally we have our drinks that we're doing and today i came out came up with the new creation, we're gonna mix a little bit of um, a little Vizzy. We're gonna add some Moscato and then a shot of vodka, and we're gonna mix all that up. And we're gonna try it and see how it goes. So you will see that our products, our, al- al- our alcohol products, are covered for copyright issues. So just please ignore those. So while I make the drinks, Nick is just gonna give us a little rundown and a recap of what we've been up to these past few weeks. It feels like it's been so long since we chatted and kind of sat here and talked, you know, honey, as we've missed you. And hopefully, if you didn't hear by land and far and you didn't see us on your lovely little phone screens, but we had an event called Put Your Black In It, you heard? And honest to God, we we really had a lot of fun. We did a live mm-hmm. taping, darling. We had yeah. a lot of ass shaking, a lot of gyrating, a lot of whining. It was Afrobeats and Soka, and it was so much fun. We literally had such a blast. Mm-hmm. Like, And we just want to thank everybody for coming out and supporting us. Speaking about supporters, we're just going to get into the sponsors. Yes. So again, we just want to give a great, 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 huge shout out to HB Mortgages, the Neon Dragon, Debt Advisors Canada, and yes. in collaboration with Club Happenings, darling. So we want to thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for everything that you did with the event and just everything hopefully that you can continue to do, darling. And, you know, I think just speaking about it. You know, like I said, we did a live taping. It was our first live taping. It was great. The audience was amazing. The laughs were there, honey. But you know, obviously the topic, if you weren't there, was bathhouse culture. And Div and I sat there and we were like, you know what, why not dive a little deeper and get into bathhouse culture on an episode, honey? So that's what we're here to talk about, darlings. We're here to talk about bath house culture and why yes. not better than to do it with the bath house connoisseurs but ourselves but <laughs> you know we're international well i shouldn't say international but we've been to a few <laughs> we're we national did. definitely we're national we zipped it and zoot it and you know i think let me just start off with what my first experience of a bath house was and i'm gonna give you the tea we're gonna really dive into it but um I was on a little app, if you don't know the app, it's called Grinder. back in the day, and um, some, you know, individual was messaging me, and they were like, oh my god, like, come over to my place, like, come here, come here, and they dropped the pin, and for those of you that live in Winnipeg, he dropped the pin of Adonis, okay? Mm. I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. But, mm. So we'll leave it at that. Mm-hmm. So, I'm sitting here like, okay, like, this is a weird, like, not a weird area, but I was like, okay, like, work so we go i not we sorry it was just me so i go i pull up and i'm looking at the building and i'm like is this really his house like i'm like this looks like a compound i'm like what am i rolling up to like this is a lot so i open the door there's like a gate there's like you know on the window there's a second door i'm like what's 
happening? So then I go, the guys ask me for $5 for or whatever, and I'm like, $5? I'm like, is this not, like, is this, who is, whose place is this? And then the guy comes around the corner, he's like, oh yeah, this is the bathhouse, girl. <laughs> like, I got a room for us. I'm like, a room? Oh. So I walk in. First of all, this is the first time I ever, like, there's a lot. We're going to dive into it. Wait, what type of room was it? Because I want to know the level of clownery you were on. This is what I'm about to say. So when I'm first in there, right, I thought this was somebody's house. So I don't know what a bathhouse is. I did not know what to expect in there. I'm seeing swings. I'm seeing people in towels. I'm seeing a hot tub. I'm seeing uh, private parts. (laughs) And I go to the right. There's this room. It's dark. He turns on the little makeshift light. There's like a single bed. I haven't slept on a single bed since I was probably in like kindergarten. <laughs> There's like a little sheet that barely, if you've been to a bathhouses, you're lucky if you get a proper sheet for your bed, okay? <laughs> if you so, get a sheet. If you get a sheet. So the sheet's on, half hanging onto the bed for dear life. Now, I know the question that you're all wondering is, did I go through with it? Absolutely I did. <laughs> that was the whore that I was, so we're gonna keep it like that. <laughs> but again, it was the experience. I was like, whoa, like the guy actually made me think I was pulling up to like residential, but I pulled up to the residence. Honestly, that's a really I don't know if how I would view bathhouses if that was my first experience. Cause I was well aware when I went to a bathhouse and I feel like you should be. I don't know how because it's very like you're just stimulated and not even like in a sexual way obviously but like it's just a lot for your first time going so the fact that you actually went through with it is the cherry on top (laughs) because somebody like me i feel like i would just my anxiety would be really getting the best of me and i'd be like i need to get out actually i lied i'd probably stay and do the same to be honest if you're already there right you already how i looked at it i'm like yeah i'm already here i'm already Mm -hmm. horny like we might as well just do it the ass was right and i'm like okay Mm -hmm. like he paid like i didn't pay i'm like why not like like what like i was jarred at like i was jarred like even after obviously Mm, i called up all my girlfriends i was like you're not gonna believe where the hell i was just at i was double checking up the bathhouse like Accidentally too Accidentally Like like literally I had no idea Where I was going Which again We'll get into guides And things like that later uh, But I mean Well Tell us uh, your experience Annie. <laughs> Well mine wasn't quite like that My first experience So I was well aware I was going I actually was sober Was I? Yeah No I actually went sober Because I was really Interested in it I've heard about them For a while And like I just wanted to really explore it, so I decided to go with one of my exes, and we, so we went to the one in downtown Toronto, Steamworks, which is a really nice one, um, now I'm going to other ones, but anyways, we went, and it was already kind of like a little recipe for disaster because again there's so many things I didn't know mm-hmm. so like I just remember like the first time walking in and like again there's all these doors there's all these people there's it's like a maze too like when you're walking around there's like hallways and little crevices and this and that and then there's dark rooms and my my one takeaway and I tell this to everybody from my first experience was when I was in one of the dark rooms. So the dark rooms are literally pitch black, like, and you're just walking around. There's maybe, like, oh, one little red light bulb in the corner, and still, like, it's just really hard to see. So I was just walking, again, as Nick was mentioning, you're in your towel and nothing but. So I was walking, and I nearly slipped. And it was a bodily fluid for sure. Ooh. I'm going to go the safe route and just assume it was somebody's children on the ground. But it could have been, it honestly could have been anything because, especially in those dark rooms, like you Girl, really don't know what's going you don't on. Know what I mean. So, I guess, like, that was my kind of first experience. I did go a hundred times after that because I actually really enjoyed it. And I only, like, I like, I only slept with like one person, like, and it was really. And I was like, okay, cool, I'm good. Because I didn't know bathhouses, you're like, you kind of stay there all night, and it's like uh, hours. The casino, you know? Yeah. You kind of forget how long you've been in there. Yeah, literally. Until you just feel like you can't walk no more. You know? No, exactly. Like, which might be a problem, but it's 
<laughs> feel like what not better than to understand where they actually came mm -hmm. from. A little history lesson. Woo! Yes. So I am. on my little Uber, I kind of wanted on my Uber ride home, I just kind of wanted to do a little quick read and to just give y'all a little little history lesson on where bathhouses even originated from and where they came and how we even have bathhouses today, what they even are. Some viewers, some people listening probably don't even know what a bathhouse is yet. Um, but don't worry, we're gonna get into that. So what I was kind of reading and what I took away is that bathhouses have actually been here for so long. Like it said 250 BC and this is an article by BBC so take it up with them if that's not accurate. Um, so, like, they've been around for a while, and the way they originated was, um, for poor people who couldn't really have access to showers back then, so it was like a little spa-type vibe that people would go to at the end of the week to bathe and, you know, fully wash off from the week, and people would just bathe in the same bathtubs and the same showers um people of all sexes so mm -hmm. it kind of just evolved from there and then it kind of took i feel like a little sexual route so that's like a little obviously there's a lot more details there's different types of bathhouses in different countries and different styles from what i was reading and learning so you can really dive more into it that article will be down below in all our links so if you really want to read more i definitely recommend that article obviously you know do proper research don't just be going off of wikipedia i did not go on wikipedia once when i was looking up my little history lessons so i guess that's kind of like the history now let's fast forward to 2022 and bathhouses now have really evolved into and in Toronto at least, like they're advertised as nightclubs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure here as well, like they're nightclubs. Quote unquote. So it's really become part of the nightlife, which I find really interesting. I'm like you really do see a lot of foot traffic after two AM when the bars Bro, the traffic is crazy. Traffic jams, <laughs> traffic jams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a rush hour. And like again, like, you know, it's very interesting that, you know, bathhouses have just been around for centuries for, for from time really and how society has just changed kind of the structure and the view of how sex and doing it with other people yeah. in this common safe area could really be like it's just very interesting to us you know especially to me like it's just like, i mean like on? i do get some like reservations for bathhouses because yes i do agree it's a breeding ground for stds <laughs> But, if you're safe and with education, that's why you have us, your little guides, to be safe and ensuring that, you know, you have always are practicing safe sex. Per. There is consent. Per. Across the board. Per. And again, that is just an overall positive experience for all parties involved. Big per. Um, so, as we give you a little guide, I think... We're gonna just kind of paint what to picture if it's your first time going to a bathhouse because my first time I kind of knew what they were but again I didn't expect anything like what I knew of bathhouses was from movies and shows and like I don't really think it's that accurate um, and uh, especially gay bathhouses so the first one I went to was Steamworks I guess just expect dark lighting my folks with their glasses it's gonna be a nightmare. They do fuck up. They will get dirty. It's so hard to see. I just recommend taking them off and just leaving them in your room. You're there. Honestly, it's hard to see. You're probably already intoxicated, so Please. that doesn't really matter. So just throw that out the window. Just keep your glasses in your room slash your locker. There's lockers or rooms, so they'll ask you if you want to get a room, a locker. Mm. Lockers are obviously a little cheaper. But then rooms varies. You could get like a single, a double, a king. Then you could get theme rooms with swings and there's different things at different bathhouses and like there's cages in some of the rooms and it really it depends on what you're feeling for that night and then as i was saying before the little dark rooms are very dark <laughs> and they're called dark rooms for a reason but your eyes will adjust um be cautious when you're walking in <laughs> because people will pop up out of nowhere because you just can't see anything um 
And maybe a dark room might not be your judge for the first time you go. Take baby steps. Um, I think that's my little advice for painting a picture. Do you have anything else? Yeah, I have a lot to say actually. Uh, um, <clears throat> when it comes to bathhouses here in Winnipeg, they're not the caliber that I would expect coming from going to Vancouver, Toronto, and hopefully Montreal. Um, but, you know, the one thing you can always hopefully expect is a hot tub, you know, and you can always yeah. expect a lot of moving bodies. You can expect brit um, light lit, sorry, bright lit areas. You can expect a lot of dark areas, as Dick was saying, the dark rooms. You can expect a lot of smells. That's what also shocked me the first time too. I wasn't expecting right, to yeah. smell a lot of things. You smell poppers, you sometimes smell cigarettes, you sometimes smell like alcohol. sex, sometimes you smell alcohol, sweat. sometimes you smell sweat. Like there's a lot of different, like your senses are literally on 50 million when you first go. Cause, cause when you think about it, sorry, no, no, I don't want to get a little bit off topic here, but it's not really off topic, but when you think about sex, a lot of the time it almost feels like a, oh, uh, like a, mm, like a hush hush, like you keep it cute, right? Whereas when you go to a bathhouse, no one really gives up. Like you go and people do what they own, oh, yeah, see, and people do what they want to do. So it's very much like your senses are literally overwhelmed with all of the bodies, all of the scents, and things like that. So I would just expect to see a lot of bodies, a lot, smell a lot of things, go through a lot of different rooms. It almost feels like it's a, a fun house almost because they have like showers with mirrors that you could see through and peep on people. They have sometimes like like areas behind like uh change rooms so you can like have that little peeping change room fantasy mm. like they oh, make you right. like they yeah. make you do a lot like they really oh and the steam rooms too girl like they got steam rooms like I, like there's the uh, saunas i don't even know if you touched on that but like saunas, or, like yeah. anything you could really think of they got so it's just a great way to just enjoy yourself you what know would, what would be your do's and don'ts if you had to choose a do let's do one like one of each a do and a don't well for going to a bathhouse I would say number one but you don't want to do is not educate yourself mm -hmm. don't be like me and just think you're going to someone's house educate yourself know where you're going know the area you're going to know what kind of establishment this is what you're getting yourself into because the more you feel comfortable and the more you feel within yourself that whoa this is something i can do it's gonna make the experience a lot better i would say what you should do in my personal opinion i feel like you should just go in with a mindset that you know what even if i just chill by myself and i just go and enjoy the hot tub that's still a good night for me like i think you should look at the experience not of just going to fuck some ooh, not going to like have sex with somebody but just like maybe you just want to chill in the hot tub maybe you just want to mm -hmm. steam maybe you just want to look at people like you don't have to do what you don't want to do i think that's the main takeaway don't do what you don't want to do do what you feel comfortable with and I think you'll get more enjoyment out of that yeah I know I definitely agree with that that was honestly gonna be my do but I thought of another do don't worry um, and a do for me is definitely especially um, if you're a little apprehensive anxious nervous is the buddy system go with somebody you're very comfortable with somebody maybe whether that's a sexual partner a best friend whatever it is have that buddy system just so it kind of just helps you and I honestly prefer the times that I've gone with a buddy slash friend because it just it just it's like it's it's just fun because then you could talk about things that you saw and this and that and like it just really takes off the pressure of a whole bathhouse and I feel like my don't for a bathhouse would be it's like don't go into it like honestly have like no expectations like don't have any expectations going into it like have certain expectations obviously that goes without saying mm -hmm. um but all in all just put yourself like you were saying in a very like a positive mindset again everybody there is there to have fun everybody is really experimenting with their sexuality experimenting with their kinks experimenting with their partners slash partners 
So everybody's there for a good time and not a long time. Big time. Um, but I just kind of wanted to dive a little deeper because you know it wouldn't be no shot eh? yeah. if we didn't really, you know, dive and take this one step further. So although we've been talking about all the great things about bathhouses, we kind of got to shift gears a little bit and kind of outline the other things about bathhouses that people might not realize and I honestly came to this realization um, just as we were talking about discussing this topic for our live taping in this episode that's when I really sat down and really dissected the whole concept of bathhouses and what I realized is that a lot of no bathhouses and just even sex in general is centered around male pleasure and we see it at the bathhouses because we don't really have like an all-female bathhouse I haven't seen one if you have please do let me know um, what I've only seen are gay bathhouses or co-ed bathhouses um, and again even that if you think about gay bathhouses again that's centered towards male pleasure even though we're engaging in gay sex we still have kind of like i don't know that like male privilege that other folks don't have and even at a co-ed bathhouse it's more so again i believe to pleasure males because simply because we don't have like lesbian bathhouses or bathhouses that are just tailored to women because we have bathhouses that are just tailored to men so i think like bringing this up and having a conversation we could really start to you know dismantle this type of thinking that we've all kind of been conditioned to believe in mm. and i don't think a lot of people realize this hell i didn't even realize this until a few weeks ago mm -hmm. so and because i was just always having fun i was just having fun but then we really gotta sit back and you know kind of realize our privileges and i just thought that was so interesting about sex and bathhouses in general. It is, it's just so, it, it really is interesting. Like the way as well, you know, like when it comes to like the patriarchy and just like how that's even funneled yes. itself into bathhouse culture. And just like, it sometimes almost feel like the men kind of have this entitlement that women should come there and yeah. serve them. And like, girl, mm -hmm. what are we doing? I've been to a co-ed one only here in Winnipeg and that bathhouse like, Ooh-wee, these men. Oh, girl. Like, of course, there's obviously <clears throat> some respectful ones. But the way I've just seen how these men are when they just lay eyes mm. on a woman. Like, it's just like... It's like the... It's a li yeah, it's a little like, okay. Um, I don't really know. <laughs> Not funny, haha. -ha, funny, weird. Funny, weird, weird. Yeah, so I just thought that was just really, really interesting. And it is, it's weird. <laughs> it's also disgusting. Like, listen, I just don't understand. Like, now I'm about to throw some shade. Throw it. Because I'm a male, so I yeah. feel like I can do that. And I, I never understood when men can sit there and feel like they're entitled to women. Mm. or another individual just because they have a penis it doesn't make sense to me yeah. like at the end of the day we still breathe the same air we still function as humans the mostly somewhat the same way so to me i'm like you feel like you're superior because you have a penis that's ridiculous and there's things that even i don't know about you but there's things that have been taught to me just because of how men are taught to behave how men are taught to conduct themselves and it's like this shit isn't cute that doesn't go on especially and, in the bathhouse that shit doesn't go on so and, I need to watch <laughs> but might i add like and just piggybacking up piggybacking off of exactly what you're saying in your point it's like what we've been taught and conditioned and i really feel like is the question like are men more sexually sexually promiscuous mm. or are women taught not to be sexually promiscuous i think it's both 
Same. Yeah, it's okay, both. Good. We didn't even talk about this. Yeah. I was wondering. I think it's a combination of both. It's a combination too. of motherfucking yeah. both. Because guess what? Like I was saying, men are taught to behave a certain way. Don't show emotion. You're the provider of the household. What you say goes. All this blah, blah, blah horse shit. And then women are what? <laughs> taught to sit there and play with dolls and just sit there and oh, learn how to cook God. and learn oh, yeah. how to do like home shit, home Pleasure. stuff. Yeah. And pleasure a male. Like how to, like again. Why do you think in sex ed courses a lot of like a lot of the shit is structured around male genitalia from what I remember? I don't remember my teacher really talking too much about women gen- genitalia. It's just about this is the vagina, this is this, it just the labels. But they really talked about putting a condom on, doing this. Again, a lot of stuff that's tailored around men and it's like girl. Mm-hmm. And what I sorry, what I also really, really realized and take this as shade don't take it as shade i don't really care but it's just like one like the biggest piece of evidence that literally men are just taught that they're to be pleasured is just in the fact that when i talk to all my girlfriends none of you are hitting the spot what? nobody oh, it's god. rare and oh it's it's god. really funny Jesus. because a lot of women will agree that when a guy is hitting the spot, they're like, wow, the whole concept of being dickmatized comes into play. Let's actually really think about it. It's because you're, because majority of men are not hitting the spot. They think and they've been taught that sex is just to make them come. So they, and then it's seen it in porn. Back to- it reflects in porn, it reflects in society. It's so crazy how many levels to this shit there is. And it's like, you don't really realize it until you sit there and actually think about it. But at the same time though, before we could talk about men hitting spots, I think we need to talk about them washing their assholes, right? Like passing the straight water. Man. As we've heard from straight men, I've heard this saying from somebody that we love so closely, y'all ain't even passing the water back there. So <laughs> before we want to talk about pleasuring a, and that, I don't, like, to me, even saying pleasuring a woman, like, I feel like it should just be a neutral thing. It should be it should be enjoyment and pleasurement for all. Yeah. Like you should know how to deal with your partner. The other person should know how to deal with their partner. Again, like to me, when I say pleasuring a woman, it almost feels like again you're putting yourself above. It's not about that. Sex is an yeah. enjoyable thing for everybody. You want to pleasure each other. Again, like you were saying, half y'all don't even know where the clit is. Mm-hmm. Half y'all don't even know shit. We literally, well, Div is gay. I'm pansexual, but like I I know what I need to do when I need to do, okay? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, there's a difference between us queers, right? Most of the straight men, this is no shade because I have straight friends. I'm not trying to come for Mm y'all, but I'm just like, a lot of the stories I've been hearing, I'm like, y'all aren't even washing your dicks properly. (laughs) No, but actually- It's funky. And And not funky, funky, like groovy. It's like funky gross. Like y'all need to get, use some, and I don't want to see. Okay, sorry. I know we're getting go off up, topic, up, up, but up, up, I just up. need to talk about hygiene for a second. It does tie into bathos culture. Listen, people, I beg now. Hey, I beg. Oh, before you leave your house now, please, I beg. Soap, hot water. Get yourself together. I'm not washcloth. Something. I, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to keep it a buck because what we're not gonna do. If you want to have fun with people. We're going to need a little Irish spring. We're going to need something yeah. because it's just, how do you, how can we do what we want to do if we're smelling you from two weeks ago? Like, it's the biggest turn off. <laughs> it's just not going to work. You need to do better, even just for your body. Like, let's talk about it. Like, just for your body, have some self, hi, honey, have some self worth, take pride in yourself. I know we're going a little bit off topic, but it still ties into the bathhouse culture. When you go to the bathhouse, present yourself nicely. You never know. You might even meet your next your next thing at the okay, bathhouse. Pause, pause, pause. If you are looking for your spouse at the bathhouse, honestly, therapy is calling. We need to unpack. And no one's saying they're looking for their spouse, but I'm just if saying. If you find your spouse at a bathhouse. You never know. Maybe you were just blindly looking. And you just walked into that one room. Watch me find the person at a bathhouse now. <laughs> like, no, personally, me. That. No, I'm just playing. Personally, no. me, that's not my it's not for me, yeah. But, but like, if I'm that's just saying, you never know. You happy, I'm happy. But, or even a friend, like, like no one wants to, <laughs> no one wants to come if you smell like you're doing Colgate. <laughs> like, no one, like, if you, like, it, anyways, the point is, 
what people need to do is stop with the hierarchy when it comes to mm -hmm. males and they need to lower themselves down and a bathhouse is pleasurable for all it's not yeah. just about male pleasure honey and that Ooh. honestly just takes us to our next point on how we could even make bathhouses more inclusive yes and honey. just and like and not just bathhouse, it's just sex in general. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like it's just so tailored around pleasuring men. Mm -hmm. And like, it, it, and then like, we don't even get into the conversation. Like, it's just men and women. Like, now, like, let's talk about gender fluidity. Like... Right? And it's just like, how can, can there, bathhouses can have certain nights that appeal to different demographics and different crowds, but people aren't doing that. And I feel like by doing that, not only like, are you being more inclusive and i.e. a better person, you're just destigmatizing sex in my opinion, because it's just like, yeah, just come here, have fun. It's a safe space for all. I don't care what you identify as, it's a safe space for all. And I feel like just the first step is having these conversations, bringing these things to light because um, although there is representation in bathhouses of trans individuals, I feel like there isn't something exclusively for trans individuals. And again, like I don't know, maybe that's not something they want. You know, like, I'm just saying that to be, uh, looking, coming from the angle of being more inclusive. Because if men have a bathhouse, like, I feel like everybody should have a bathhouse. You know what I mean? Or, like, a night. Or, or like, be inclusive. Like, not every single day of the week has to be, like, like you know, you can have those nights. You can be a little more inclusive. And at the end of the day, you're just, you're getting more money. Like the more people you have the more inclusive you are it's just business and like it's business like you're a better person in my opinion and i think again like ultimately it destigmatizes sex mm. which is a conversation for a whole different day and the benefits of just destigmatizing sex but we don't have to get into all of that but mm. i think that's just my two cents on making things these spaces more inclusive yeah like exactly like just you know again making it more about mutual sexual um exploration making about both parties pleasuring each other again mm -hmm. making more safe spaces having safe space policies having different nights as Div was saying you know even it could be a simple thing as you know upgrading the spaces to make them more just with what society is asking for at that time you know they've been around since bc so yeah. like at this point they've already gone through a lot of evolution so i think again we're already moving in the right direction when it comes to bathhouses i feel like the stigmatization is definitely you know going down a bit but at the same time if we want bathhouses to flourish we have to attend you know yeah, like people have to go that. people have to want to participate and it's not to, like that's not the whole point of this episode but it goes hand in hand with destigmatizing sex people don't want to go because of how much stigma there is on sex and bathhouses yeah. uh, coupled with other things as well but mm -hmm. i feel like those are big and exactly that yeah, like there's a huge stigmatization mm -hmm. on like what sex actually is and it's funny because it's really not that serious it's serious in the fact that you obviously need to be safe and you need to conduct yourself appropriately and you know be aware and know certain things right but it's not that serious that you can have fun and do other things and enjoy life and do what you want to do like there's so much that people can do besides staying at home and just tweeting hateful things or just staying at home and they don't have a jab or <laughs> staying at home and their fucking lace front is lifting like okay. you're just doing a lot like you just have fun just enjoy your life honeys <laughs> And go to, go to your next local bathhouse. Yes. And I feel like this is a perfect way to kind of like end off is we could do like our little, um, our guide slash like reviewing bathhouses. So mm -hmm. I am like originally from Mississauga living in Winnipeg right now. So like I experienced Steamworks, which if you know, you know, um, and then I came to Winnipeg. 
And then I went to the two here called Aquarius and Donis. And if there's another one, please reach out to us. So I'm curious. I'd be curious for that um, too. But Aquarius is the co-ed one and Adonis is the gay one. So I'm just gonna I feel like Steve Works is obviously the best. It's the most well time. kept. It is a franchise, so it is more like a business. Um, the other ones, like, I feel like they could obviously do better and, like, upgrade more. But then again, that goes to, like, people actually attending and people and people knowing. A lot of you didn't even know. Like, a lot of my friends that I made here, they didn't even know there were bathhouses. Yeah, bro. Until I told them. Even the, at the live, people were yeah, like, there's like, bathhouses here? Yeah. Like, people didn't really know. And it's like, mm. And you're welcome if your business went up after that live day thing. <laughs> And we told everybody to have an after party. Because, like, at the end of the day, like, if you're not getting it down, like, what are you doing? Mm -mm. And, no, like, I definitely would agree. Like, and again, like, again, this is our guide, right? So these are what we feel like if someone told us, we would be better off with knowing. You know what I'm saying? And I wish somebody told me all these things. So. Like, and expect drugs. Expect people to be doing drugs, honey. Expect people to be doing substances. Bring expect, Narcan. Be aware. That goes back to the statement of being aware. Know your surroundings. Yes. And I don't want to hear the BS of, oh, like, this is why we shouldn't condone bathhouses because of drugs. That's horseshit. Because guess what? There's drugs even on the city bus. There's drugs everywhere you There's go. There's drugs on campus. We have a drug, like a needle disposal in the bathrooms of our campus at our university. Drugs are everywhere. But again, obviously, they persist more in scenes like this. And I feel like you're just saying, be careful. And I'm be just aware. saying... And the reason why I'm saying that is because we all know how drugs and substances can alter our perception, can alter our reality, can alter our actual being and state. Mm -hmm. So be aware, this is just a tool for y'all's tool belt, your surroundings, yourself, and other people. Period. And I will say, bring your flip-flops, learn how to tie, tie a towel. Yes, honey. And not just a little fold, and this goes from my bottoms, and anybody who's a bad bitch. And you want to like do a little knot just learn how to tie a towel and finally don't forget your poppers because again you're just going to want to have a lot of fun and there's just adds a, a little razzle dazzle on top and i feel like it just adds to the whole experience again i'm not condoning drugs in any way shape or form but if you are going to do them please be safe Mm -hmm. Research, educate yourself. Mm -hmm. um, especially, one thing I wanted to touch on before we end is how bathhouse culture looks like in the time of COVID 19. Ooh. Because I think that's a very important topic. Again, be safe, be vaccinated. If Again, if you're feeling symptom symptomatic, keep your ass at home. Mm -hmm. um, wear protection. Get right. Get and again, if you're going to bathhouses, get regularly tested. You might want to get. I always like to. Every time I go to a bathhouse, I wait. You gotta wait the incubation period time. Get tested and then, you know, and you know, you know who you're hooking up with, what you're doing, whether it's unprotected or protected. Be aware. That's all. Be aware, educate yourself, get tested regularly so we don't have to deal with gonorrhea outbreaks or chlamydia and they're, outbreaks. And, and in this area, like Winnipeg, they're very rampant. I don't use the word rampant. But like everywhere, they're though, prominent. Too. Like even a lot of university campuses and residences, there's always outbreaks of chlamydia or herpes or gonorrhea. Like there's. And again, I feel like that just comes from a place of you know, education. And, yeah, so again, just educate yourself. And bring a friend. Yeah. We almost forgot. Bring a friend. It'll also help with the nerves. It'll help with your yeah. vibe. And it'll just be a fun time regardless. Yeah. Nick will go with you. In case you don't have a friend. <laughs> Let me know, honey. I'll be your backup. I'll be your security. Ain't nobody messing with me because that's what we do. So if you need me to come and show you around, I'm here to help. Just hit me up in the DMs, girl. And we're good to go. Okay? But So... As we wrap up our little episode, how'd you feel about the candy? Did you try the candy? Yeah, I was kidding. I did. I know I didn't try this. You need to try that before. We need to give the girls and the gays and everybody in between so a review. As I try this next week, we have a guest, so stay tuned. Woo! 
They're hilarious. You're gonna love them. You're gonna love it, darlings. Love them. You're probably <laughs> gonna love them more than us because they're gonna steal the show. Period, Pooh. So stay tuned for that episode. Everybody's gonna be really excited for that one. I'm excited for that. I'm um, excited, girl. Yeah, so as I eat these. And more events coming. Don't sleep. Don't wait. I know there's some news that I gotta share soon, but I wanna share it yet, honey. But before. Regardless, there's more events coming, so sound off and let us know what you want to hear, honey. What music you want us to bump at the clubs. And, I'm going to give you my honest opinion about these, these sweets, okay? These candy, these treats. These tricks are for kids. So, the chocolate is giving scrum diddly um shits. Like it's, it's giving It's giving Wonka. Charlie and the chocolate factory. It's giving Willy. If I, like, I've always wanted a chocolate that, like, kind of replicated like the golden ticket like this i got it i got it thank you for that it's Alicia. giving it's giving these right here thank you these are giving too like no cap like They're so good i'm actually kind of shook i was a little bit hesitant because i don't like packaging like this it's no shot a it just like Why? it makes me feel like it's going to taste a little bit like process like even more than it already is but you eat maynards Okay. Yeah. We don't come for sugar joy like that. No, no, girl. Like I said, it process. Was it was a compliment, honey. Oh, they're good. I just was expecting something different by the packaging, but the mouth was giving me what I needed. Yeah. So it's tens across the board for me. I feel yeah, like we honestly. Should do that from now on. Tens yeah. across the board, and then even the drink. I really like the drink. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would add something a little, maybe like some fruit in it to. Mm. Level it up a bit. To give it a little moment. Yeah, or even I, I was gonna add these, but I completely forgot we got carried away with our topic. But even just adding these candies, I think, will be really good in the drinks. So, give it a moment. Highly recommend. Until then, it's time for us to go. It's time for us to depart, honey. We'll miss you, and we'll see you. We always say next week, but y'all, y'all know us with our time. Y'all know us. We busy, honey. <laughs> we, we're both the busy. We got to do so. <sighs> Bye. But You'll see us when you see us, bitch. Yes, honey. So, okay. <laughs> stay blessed and highly favored and get to a bathhouse quickly, honey. And thank you for watching, tuning in, making, make sure to check us out on TikTok, Instagram, all podcast platforms, and YouTube. So, till yeah. next time, see y'all later. Bye. Bye. Bye.